Lisa Marie Young was born on the 5th of May 1981 in Nanaimo, Vancouver Island, British Columbia. Lisa was the first of three children born to parents Don Young and Merlene Joanne Martin, who was a member of the Tolokwiet First Nation, located on the west coast of Vancouver Island. Lisa had two brothers named Brian and Robin, more commonly known as Robbie, and the family resided in the Nanaimo area of British Columbia. According to family and friends who knew Lisa Marie, she was bubbly, funny, outgoing, hardworking, and she was a very independent young woman who adored spending time with her family and friends. She was extremely close to her family in particular and was very protective of her younger brothers, Brian and Robbie. As children, the three young siblings spent much of their time together, enjoying taking picnics and picking blueberries for pancakes. Lisa was also reportedly a very fiery individual and always stood up for what she believed in. She was very confident and strong-willed. During her spare time, the 21-year-old also enjoyed going rollerblading, dancing, playing basketball and participating in water skiing, as well as being creative, painting with watercolours. In mid-2002, when Lisa was nearly 21 years old, she managed to secure an apartment across town from the family home, and her father Don was helping her move in. Lisa was extremely excited about the prospect of living in her own apartment, as up until this point, she had lived next door to her family in a shared apartment. By this time, Lisa had even managed to gain employment at a call centre, which was due to begin in early July, just a couple of days after moving in to her new apartment. Things were beginning to take shape in her life. Lisa actually had bigger plans for herself in the future, and she was considering going off to college to hopefully someday pursue work as a TV sports broadcaster. Her call centre job was simply to pay the bills. Just like many other 21-year-olds, Lisa enjoyed spending her nights out clubbing in Nanaimo. She was quite accustomed to the night scene there, especially since she had previously worked as a bartender at the Jungle Nightclub. Despite going out to nightclubs on a regular basis, Lisa almost always kept her parents in the loop and informed them of her plans and her whereabouts when she was out for the night. She was very responsible in that sense. On Saturday the 29th of June 2002, during the Canada Day long weekend, at approximately 11pm, Lisa informed her parents that she was going out to a party with some friends in downtown Nanaimo to celebrate her friend Dallas Hulley's birthday. Due to Lisa Marie's busy schedule with moving house the following day and starting her new job within 48 hours, her parents Don and Joanne found the fact that their daughter was going out partying so late quite strange, even if it was for a friend's birthday. Despite voicing their concerns, Lisa told her parents not to worry. Lisa left the family home shortly afterwards and arrived at the Jungle nightclub at around midnight where she stayed for a couple of hours before the club shut its doors at approximately 2.30am. 
It was at around this time that Lisa, her friend Dallas and a number of other acquaintances walked out into the parking lot and it was at this time that one of Lisa's friends struck up conversations with a 27 year old man named Christopher Adair. Adair spoke to Lisa and her friends and actually informed them about another house party that was taking place in South Nanaimo. Adair actually managed to convince the friends to attend this house party, even though they had just met, and the group subsequently hitched a ride to the gathering in Adair's Burgundy Jaguar. They spent around an hour at this particular party before heading to another in the early hours of June 30th. As the partying continued at the second house located in the Cathars Lake area of Nanaimo, Lisa became quite hungry, but because she was a vegetarian, something which she had actually accustomed as a toddler, there was nothing at this particular house party that she could eat. Christopher Adair actually overheard Lisa talking about her situation to some friends, and he started conversing with her, telling her that a nearby sandwich shop was still open. Adair then offered to take Lisa there in his car, and she accepted, the pair leaving the house party at approximately 3am in Christopher's Jaguar, which actually belonged to his grandmother. This was the very last time that Lisa Marie Young was seen alive. Later that morning, at approximately 4.30am, Lisa Marie actually phoned her friend Dallas Hulley and told him that Christopher didn't take her to a sandwich shop for food, but to yet another house party. At this point, Lisa was calling from inside Adair's Jaguar, parked in the driveway of an unknown house. Lisa didn't have any idea where she was, nor did she recognise anybody at this third gathering. Lisa was understandably worried and actually feared for her own safety. Something about the whole situation just didn't sit well with her. Lisa's final known contact was an unsettling text message to her friend Dallas, which simply read, quote, Come get me. They won't let me leave. What struck Lisa's parents as odd was the fact that the following day on June 30th, the day that their daughter was due to move in to her new apartment, Lisa didn't contact them at all, which was extremely worrying, not to mention very out of character. Lisa's parents called her throughout the day, but she never answered the phone. Don and Joanne initially believed that their daughter was perhaps too busy to answer, maybe she was finalising her moving plans, so they went over to her apartment, but she wasn't home. Both Don and Joanne realised something was incredibly wrong after a previous roommate of Lisa's actually arrived at their residence, asking of her whereabouts, as she hadn't collected any of her belongings to move in to her new apartment. Don and Joanne subsequently went through their daughter's phone book and contacted every single person in it, but nobody knew where their daughter was, and as a result, the Youngs contacted the RCMP, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, to report their 21-year-old daughter missing, but they were told by dispatchers to contact them once 48 hours had passed, as it was too soon to file a missing persons report at that time. Don and Joanne were understandably outraged by this, so decided to search for their daughter, along with family and friends, up and down the coast themselves. 
An RCMP officer did visit the Young's residence later that day to get a picture of Lisa and to ask questions regarding her disappearance. However, Don and Joanne got the impression that the police weren't taking their daughter's disappearance seriously. As a result, Lisa's parents took matters into their own hands and took their daughter's case to the local media, speaking to a reporter, appealing for information and placing missing persons posters around the vicinity of Vancouver Island. Shortly after the story was printed in local newspapers, Lisa's family were informed that her case was now being investigated by the Serious Crimes Unit. This gave them mixed feelings, due to the fact that the case was, of course, now being taken more seriously, but her family were worried that this also meant that something sinister had happened to Lisa. Police conducted their first land search for the 21-year-old, shockingly, two months after Lisa Marie disappeared in September of 2002, but unfortunately, no trace of Lisa was found. The searches continued, but once again turned up nothing of significance in regards to Lisa Marie's disappearance. The RCMP eventually interviewed Christopher Adair, but not until an entire month had passed since Lisa Marie was last seen. It then came to light that Christopher had previously been charged with assault, fraud, theft, traffic violations, court order violations and unauthorised use of credit cards, these charges being laid in Kamloops, British Columbia and in Edmonton, Alberta. He was also charged later in October 2002, four months after Lisa disappeared, for assaulting a police officer in Yorkton, Saskatchewan. When questioned by the RCMP regarding the disappearance of Lisa Marie, Adair allegedly claimed that on the night in question, he dropped Lisa off somewhere and she said that she was going to call a taxi to take her home, but there is no proof of this actually happening. During police interviews, Joanne Martin, Lisa's mother, briefly joined Adair in the interrogation room with younger pictures of her daughter, RCMP officers hoping that this would somehow guilt trip Adair into confessing the truth regarding what happened on the night Lisa Young disappeared. Joanne asked Adair where her daughter was, but he simply replied with, quote, I can't. I'm sorry. I don't mean to disrespect your family. It is reported that Christopher Adair passed a polygraph test in regards to Lisa's disappearance, but as we all know, lie detectors are not 100% accurate, nor are they in any way reliable. Therefore, they cannot be used as evidence in court. Adair's car was also sweeped by forensics for any clues which could indicate foul play, but nothing was found. It was allegedly reported by a number of Nanaimo locals that before the vehicle was actually seized by the RCMP, that the car had been completely cleaned out. However, there is no evidence to prove that this actually occurred. With nothing to prove that he was involved in the 21-year-old's disappearance, the RCMP had no choice but to release Christopher Adair without charge. Some sources claim that Christopher moved away from the province of British Columbia shortly afterwards. During their investigation, police discovered that Lisa Marie's phone was last located in the Departure Bay area, but what happened to her phone afterwards remains a mystery, as it has never been located.
It is also unclear if the house where Lisa made the phone call to her friend was ever searched. What happened to Lisa Young after this phone call to her friend remains a mystery to this day. The RCMP kept a lot of details regarding this case out of the public eye as not to compromise their investigations, but Lisa's mother, Joanne, raised a number of concerns regarding the RCMP's efforts into finding her daughter. Joanne felt as if they were holding back information, especially in regards to updates in the case. The Youngs always called police for any updates. Rather bizarrely, it was never the other way around. A reenactment video of Lisa's disappearance was produced by Crime Stoppers in 2009 in the hopes that it would trigger someone's memory, but it actually took many years to finally be released. Only when Joanne got a reporter involved did the RCMP finally agree to film a reconstruction, and according to Joanne, the police allegedly denied that Crime Stoppers still filmed reenactments when they actually still did at the time. Human remains were found in North Nanaimo in 2009, and following the discovery, many of the locals began speculating that they could have been the remains of Lisa Marie Young. However, it was confirmed shortly afterwards that the remains did not belong to the missing 21-year-old. Some locals claim to know exactly what happened to Lisa on the night she disappeared, and at the third house party that she attended with Adair, a group of men with links to the criminal underworld were reportedly present. It was rumoured that the drug trade in Nanaimo was rife at the time, and the presence of the infamous Hells Angels was once again a cause for concern. Ultimately, what fate befell Lisa Marie Young on that fateful night in June 2002 remains unknown. At the time of her disappearance, Lisa Marie Young was 21 years old and stood at approximately 5 feet 4 inches tall and weighed around 115 pounds. She is described as being of Aboriginal descent, having a slim build with a dark complexion. She also has long, straight, dark brown hair and brown eyes, and has a tattoo on her lower back of dolphins, and another tattoo in the middle of her right bicep of a band of flowers with a heart in the centre. Lisa also carried a number of piercings, including in both earlobes, her tongue and her navel. Young was last seen wearing a sleeveless black coloured top, a black skirt and a pair of thigh-high black boots. She was also wearing a silver necklace. Unfortunately, Lisa's mother, Joanne, passed away in June 2017 from liver failure, without knowing the fate of her only daughter. Up until her dying breath, she continued searching for answers, handing out flyers and hanging up missing persons posters around Vancouver Island. Lisa's father, Don, also suffered a number of health issues following his daughter's vanishing, family citing the stress of Lisa's disappearance as being a contributing factor in Joanne's rapid decline in health. According to Joanne's sister, Carol, during the investigation into Lisa's disappearance, Joanna tried to hide the fact that her daughter was of Indigenous origins because she feared that her daughter would be judged by not only law enforcement but the public. 
Many indigenous females are presumed to have lives which involve trouble, drugs, alcohol and sex work. Therefore, their cases are swept under the carpet and not taken seriously. In Canada, especially the likes of British Columbia, many Aboriginal women and girls are murdered or go missing, a huge proportion in comparison to those from non-native backgrounds. Discrimination is one of the larger culprits here. However, a number of other underlying issues are contributing factors. The fact of the matter is that these women are not being treated as they should, with the same respect as non-natives. Something needs to be done. A candlelit vigil for Lisa Marie Young is held every year, with many of the local community coming together to remember the bubbly 21-year-old. Even one of Lisa's old friends, Alison Crow, released a song in her memory, named Lisa's Song, which is sung at these vigils annually. Lisa's remaining family and friends have never forgotten her, and to this day continue to seek justice for her. Unfortunately, Lisa's friend Dallas Hulley, who was the last person to have any contact with Lisa Young, passed away in March 2018 following a road traffic accident. He was 38 years old. Despite the suspicious nature of this case, Lisa Marie Young is still considered as a missing person by the RCMP rather than a victim of foul play. However, investigations are reportedly still ongoing and Christopher Adair remains a person of interest. It is most likely that Lisa met with foul play on the night she vanished, but until she is found either alive or deceased, it is unlikely that we will ever know with certainty what happened to her.